Hey. Hi, Ben. Hey. Oh, are we too Barbara. early? Sorry. Oh, no, come no. on in. Sit down. I'm going to well, go grab it. Why don't you sit? Wait a minute. Wait. Well, this test better show something. Well, I wouldn't get my hopes up. The kid's got a history of violence, honey. The kid was sleepwalking, Tom. He didn't know what he was doing, where he was. I know. That's what you want to believe. You want my opinion. The kid's faking it. So, Eddie, how'd it go last night? Why don't you ask him? Okay, Ben, how'd it go last night? Uh, we ran a battery test on Eddie. Uh, drug screening, overnight polysomnography that measures sleep patterns. You want to just say that all again in layman's terms? What uh, Dr. Sleep here is trying to say is there's some good news and some bad news. Well, the good news is that Eddie is 100% drug-free. Blood tests, your analysis, all clear. Well, so what's the bad news? Well, I wouldn't say it's bad news exactly. Eddie had another incident last night. Now, no one was hurt and there was no damage. Actually, in a way, it was good news because it gave us a chance to observe his behavior and compare it with the results of the polysomnography, the, the, the sleep test. Okay. okay. We found that Eddie experiences significant brain disturbance in the first few hours of sleep. Now, mm -hmm. that's consistent with the condition I had told you about, the night terror. The night terror, that's right. So it is a medical condition, right? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, don't get too grateful. It ain't over yet. But... But there's something we can do about it. There's some, there's something, there's some way we can solve the Eddie, problem, right? I owe you an apology about the drugs. You told the truth. It's all right, man. Don't worry about it. I uh, probably would have thought the same thing. Okay, so Ben, what can we do? What can we do to solve, solve Eddie's problem? Well, we have a few options. Well, like locking me up, right, Doc? But we're not going to do that. No, just, just at night, you know, a couple of my foster... Oh, come on. A couple of my foster parents used to do it just at night so Eddie. I wouldn't hurt me, but... They'd lock you up like some animal? I, you know what? I don't think so. Ben, what's the treatment for something like this? Well, like I said, we have several options. Um, none of them particularly easy. The most effective treatment is a drug called benzodiazepine. No way. Right. No wait, drugs, wait, all right? Wait, no Ed, drugs. Eddie, I, if Ben says it's going to no help... No drugs, and that is it. final, all right? If you guys think that I'm going to take drugs after what happened to Dina... You're nuts. I'm not going to take anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. Eddie, Dr. Harris is not talking about the type of drugs you've seen on the street. Don't make no difference. Do you want to get better? Look, drugs are drugs, okay? Whether they come from a doctor or not, I have seen what can happen with cough syrup, even. Ben, is there anything else? There is diazepam, but, uh... But what? Well, Eddie's right. Prolonged use could lead to physical dependence. Well, Ben, we've got to do something. So far, it's only been a lamp and a telephone. But what Ooh. happens when one of my kids gets Look, in the I way? would never hurt Adam or Casey, and you know yes, that. Yes, I know that you wouldn't, but, but if you're sleepwalking, then but you There can... is another way. It's what? It's not necessarily as effective. It takes more time. Please keep talking. It's sort of a behavior modification. i got to watch my manners even when I'm asleep. Come on, guys. You have to change your nighttime habits. Set an alarm to disturb your sleep patterns. Practice deep breathing. Train your mind to go blank just before you drop off to sleep. Stuff like that works? Well, night terrors usually develop at about four or five years of age. If a child is under a lot of stress or develops sleeping habits in an unstable environment, night terrors can develop. You have to change your habits, Eddie. Come on, Eddie, it's a start. What do you think? I don't know. Look, here's some pamphlets. Probably help. Thanks. Hey, Ben, I took. Hi. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll just no, wait. No, I'll wait. Hang on. Hang on. They've got some stuff to read. Let's go out in the hall. I'll be right back. I, uh, I don't have much to report, actually. I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I talked to Raymond. He said there was no photo shoot today. Man, see, I knew Sarah Ruth wasn't being straight with me. But I talked to her agent, Rich Tuckman. And? and had to leave a message, he'll get back to me. But his assistant seemed pretty sure that, that Camille wasn't booked. All right. Thanks. It's above and beyond. No, not at all. Is there, uh, is there anything else I can do? Um, just let me know when Tuckman calls, okay? All right. Look, uh, this isn't any of my business, but you look pretty beat. I mean, is everything okay with Camille? It's not like Camille to disappear like this. Uh -huh. Now, her mother... I don't know what it is. It's, it's, something's not right. Yeah. 
Boy, this stuff is wild, man. I have to get up and, like, do something, like, four times a night. Yeah, well, that's gonna break the pattern. Yeah, but when do I sleep? When the terrors are over, I mean, that's the whole point. Yeah, you gotta do something. I guess it's worth a shot. Good. Well, I'm gonna schedule you for a psychological evaluation. No complaints. It's just part of the process, okay? Okay. I'll check on you a couple days. Make sure you're doing all right. Thank you so much, Ben. This has given us a lot of hope. Best part of the job. So, do you want me to run you home, Eddie? No, I, uh, I gotta take care of some things. You sure? It's an awful long haul. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of just need some time to myself, okay? Okay. I'll see you, Doc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Stop, kid. He just needs time to absorb all of this. All right, I'm cool with it, so it looks like there's some reading to do. Thanks, man. Easy. Thanks, man. Excuse. It's me. I'll vouch for him. Margo, hi. Hi. Yeah, we had a little family crisis, but everything's settled now. So, if you're going to keep him hard at work here, I'm going to take you to lunch, okay? I guess you haven't heard the big news. What's the big news? According to sources down at the police station, it could be James Stenbeck's back in town. Uh, what'd you learn down at the station? Not much. Jack's on it. Jack is back in town? Yeah, I gave him a lift back from Chicago. Of course, he wants me to kill the whole story. Well, I don't blame him. You print that. We don't have a chance, Emily. What are you talking about? I have to print this. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print the story oh, side no, by side. Come on. If you J go with that, then we, you, you compromise the investigation. Margot, this dropped into my lap. I have responsibility to print the news. Tom, hey, will we explain this to your wife, please? Yeah, honey, she has a good point. I mean, the public has a right to know. James has been on the lam for years. I mean, a story in the Argus isn't going to change that. Look, I don't mean to sound rude, but we've got a lot of work to do and we've got a deadline, yeah. so... Fine. Guess I'll get back to work at the station. Uh, honey, let Jack handle that. It's your day off. You know what? If you get to go after Stenbeck, so do I. You know what? You're supposed to be taking the boys over to Graham's. You know what? I just remembered that. And somebody's got to be at the house when Eddie gets home. All right. All right. You're right. You're always right. I know that. You're right. So, Emily, you don't keep him too late. No promises. All right. James and Lucinda. I definitely have insight into her story. Well, I'm not putting you on that story. What? I'm not putting you on the Stenbeck story. You're not putting me on the Stenbeck story. It's the best story we've got. I don't want to sound hard-nosed, Tom, but it's the big story. I know. So what's the problem? I'm slacking off already? No, no, not exactly. But last night, you know, I wanted you to come by, and this morning just didn't... Hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I can't just drop everything. I've got a family. For the big stories, you've got to. Listen, there are a lot of hotshot kids out there that are willing to go 24-7, Tom, just like Margot, the police station. I can write the hell out of this story. I know you can. When we were together doing that tornado story, I was so... I was blown away by your passion and, and your dedication. Not to mention your writing. But I, I, I mean, but I gotta you... prove that I'll go the extra mile. Okay. From this moment on, my number one commitment is this newspaper. Oh, Tom, no, I didn't mean you family. Margot commitment... and the boys will understand because this is what's best for me. All right? What's best for me is best for my family. Now let's get to work. Hi, you're here. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to come home. I thought you wanted to be alone. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, I just got home. You fixed the light. Yeah. All it took was a little glue. 
It's great. See, it's good as new. Great, great, great. Almost. Well, fine. What, you went to Java? Yeah. I, uh, I got a job, too. You did? You got a... That's great! Well, it's, it's nothing fancy. Yes, it's just busting tables, oh, it doesn't cleaning mean, up the no, kitchen. No, that's wonderful. It's, when, when, when do you start? What's your schedule? Do you get to dress slow up? Slow down, right slow down. I can only answer one question at a time. Eddie, that is just... I'm so proud of you.